Here's another big one. Taqwa. So taqwa is consciousness. There are certain things that it's, you need to become... This all relates, this, this all ties in together, trust me. We're going to form a shape, right? Um, taqwa is consciousness. The more conscious your clients become, the less their limiting beliefs and negative emotions will have grip over them. Your job as a coach, you being in a strong mindset and asking all those great coaching questions that you know and doing the active listening and all that kind of thing and bringing them back to this moment will increase their consciousness. And that releases the grip of the imaginary thoughts. All of their limiting beliefs are imaginary thoughts. Right? So the more that you increase your consciousness and the more that you help your clients increase their consciousness, the less freaked out and negative their thoughts are. And, and when I say conscious, I mean specifically being conscious of the fact that your thoughts aren't real. Now, there are a bunch of crazy nuffs thoughts patterns that we get into. And they're, they're crazy, and we all have these crazy things, but as long as you know they're imaginary and they're not real, they have less of a grip over you, right? So there are a bunch of crazy ego patterns. By the way, oh, God, you see, I probably should have said this. Nuffs is the Arabic word for ego. Okay, ego thoughts. Yeah. Maybe I'll... Uh, if you want to know some of the crazy um, ego thought patterns that we have, that we play out when we are at a low level of consciousness, read a book called A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Someone wants, I was telling her, people are always curious because they do this Quran coaching thing. So somebody like said, oh, can I borrow, you know, can I borrow a copy of the Quran? I was like, all right, sure. And then she's like, she gave it back to me. She's like, you know, I, I didn't really get it. I, you know, well, the reason... They didn't get it for a lot of reasons, because the Quran was written 1,400 years ago, and you know, the person didn't know Arabic, and so it's so a translation, a lot gets lost in translate. But, you know, so, but at the opening verse of the Quran, there's like a prayer, and then there's the next page, which is like, right? It says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Amazing, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> this is the book in which there is no doubt. <laughs> okay, I have five minutes left. Um, if you could, Trina, if you could do the time bending thing, because that'd be great. Because there are seven and we've done three. So. Uh, another ten, ten more after the five. If you could turn the five into ten. Okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> that's why I wasn't nervous about presenting this stuff, because she can bend time for crying out loud. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so, this is the book in which there is no doubt, hudan, guidance, lil muttaqeen, for people who are conscious. So when this girl said to me, you know, I really didn't get the Quran, I was just like, hey, you know what? What you really need is to increase, have this book. And I gave her A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Because it's a book that you read it and it, you, your consciousness literally increases as you read the book, right? She needs water, not tea. Rahma, love. So if we were to call your ego thoughts or believing that your thoughts are real as being your ego, that's a part of you. Your e this stuff, your nafs, your lower, your lower self, your ego thoughts cannot exist in the presence of your conscious awareness. It ceases to exist. That's why when I was playing with my imaginary friends and my mum called me in for dinner, I would just go in for dinner. And the imaginary friends that went back to you know, imagination land, right? This can't exist in the presence of your conscious awareness. And that's why Eckhart Tolle's book is so great, because he talks about these. And when I read it, I was like, oh, wow, Eckhart Tolle's a Sufi. But no, it was water that he was presenting, not necessarily tea, right? So, okay, so this, this is Rahma. So if this is all like your lower self stuff, this is your highest and best self. So let's do an exercise right now for everybody to get in touch with their highest and best self. Rahma itself means love. And it's an Arabic word for love. In the Quran, there are 28 different words for love. Once I read someone, someone said, you know, the thing with the Quran is that it just it doesn't talk about love. 
And then I looked at a translation of the Quran. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's kind of weird. It doesn't use the word love because there are so many different words in Arabic for love. If you use the English word love for all of them, it's like <laughs> it, it would it would almost not make any sense because there are all these different vari- there are different kinds of love, right? So rahma is one of the most common. Muslims, whenever they start anything, they say Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of God, the most loving, the most loving. In the name of God, but you know, it's never translated like that. They're different words for love. In the name of God, the most loving, the most kind. So your true self, when, cause, so you're pre- if you're consciously present to the fact that you're having all these thoughts, and if you enter the gap in between the thoughts and you become present, if you hang out in that space for a while, you return to your default state. And your default state is this, is rahma. Who wants to do that right now? All right. Um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman. The most loving bestows love upon the lovers. Irhamu man fil ardi. Love those on earth. Yarhamukum man fil sama. And you'll be loved by those in heaven. Let's bring some of that in right now. Does that sound good? So, I, what I want you to do right now is maybe close your eyes and get in touch with your heart. And I, what I want you to do is realize that You are perfect the way you are right now. If the most loving, the all-powerful wanted you to be any other way, that's the way you'd be. But you are the way you are, and that's the way you're meant to be. And everyone else in this room is perfect as well. And I want you to imagine that we all come from one soul, and we all share it. And know that everyone in this room came out of the love of God and is sustained by the love of God. Every time your heart beats, it stops and asks permission from the most loving to beat again. Everyone in this room is completely precious. I want you to love everyone in this room right now more than you love your beloved. Because they were made from the same love that your beloved was made. I want you to really imagine all of the love in your heart, just let it outpour. Love everything and everyone in this room with all of your heart right now. The people next to you, the people who are sitting on all of the other chairs, love them with all your heart right now. and know that you are loved immensely more. Love them as much as you want God to love you. Love them as much as God does love you. Love them as much as you love your beautiful children. And know that you're loved that much and more. You're being...
you're being loved by forces much greater than everything that you've ever known in this moment. And now gently allow yourself to open your eyes. So the next one is Islam. Does anybody know what Islam means? <laughs> it's okay. So if, uh, Trina, if you could turn one minute into a 10. <laughs> All right, does anybody, well, I'll tell you what. Let's just do this bit real quick and then, and, okay. Does anybody know what the word Islam means? Submission, ah, peace, and you said submission. Very good. Yeah. It actually has, like actually all of these words, it has two meanings. It has peace is, is one meaning, and a Muslim is one who brings peace to those around them. And it also means acceptance. So acceptance of what? Well, acceptance of the truth, acceptance of what is, acceptance of reality. Because only by, accept, only by accepting reality and being conscious of it, can you find inner peace? Um, put your hand up if you want to know what the final two bits are. So, <laughs> can, can, we, can we have another minute? Not cool. <laughs> uh, why don't you just tell us what they are and then wrap up? <laughs> All right, okay. So all over the Quran, it's, it has this phrase which comes from this, which is "Amanu wa amilu salih." So there's a phrase in the there's a chapter of the Quran which goes "Wal asr by time inna lansana lafi khusr." All of humankind are at loss. Illa ladina amanu wa amilu salih, except those who have this, who believe and take action. Now, traditionally, religious people will say, well, that means believing in God and the prophets and the afterlife and stuff like that. But it has a deep personal development and spiritual development meaning, which is the formula for success that every coach in the world knows, which is, Amanu wa amilu salih is literally believe and take action. Belief plus action equals success. Some people say coaching, the actual coaching part of a coaching session is the five or 10 minutes where you're like, what did you do since last week? Great. What are you going to do between now and next week? Great. Feel good about it? Good. Go. That's the actual coaching session. Everything else is fluff. <laughs> so that's that one, which is belief. And the final one, I'm not, I don't need to explain it all because Diana already did an explanation, which is presence, spiritual excellence. The Quran says, Hal jaza'ul ihsan illa al-ihsan. Could the reward for presence be anything other than presence itself. The word in Arabic, I'm using, I'm translating it as presence. It means spiritual excellence and beauty. The idea is it, it, the Quran talks about all of the things that you do when you are present. The idea is that when you are present, your actions become beautiful. When you are present, your beauty comes out. The space of coaching opens up. It becomes a sacred space. And when you do your coaching sessions in line with these values, good things happen. The aha moments, the breakthroughs, the transformations, the things that the gurus and the sheikhs and the priests and the rabbis who do Kabbalah and all that good stuff and the shamans, they open up this kind of space for those transformations to happen so that you could ultimately reach the wisdom the power is never in the coach. The power is never in the questions that the coach asks. The power is never in the cool coaching techniques. All of the power and all of the wisdom and all of the solutions are always within the client. Hard to market that, but it's true. <laughs> all right. Can you? Yes. Put the English word in a, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, rewrite okay. that up. Right. I'll write down a one word. Don't you want that in English? I do. Iman and Ihsan. And uh, 
all of these words have a lot of religious connotations. I've just filtered all of that out, so you could have more of the water and less of the tea. I hope Muslims are okay with this. They may or may not be, and that's okay. That's okay, too. Yeah. Islam, Iman, and Ihsan are the three dimensions of the Islamic faith. Of actually every religion. Uh, the three dimensions are the... Uh, you know what? That's going to turn into a theology lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand if you might be interested to maybe get a more expanded version of this at some point. Raise your hand. Okay. So maybe we will... Uh, make this available. Let's give Mamoun a big round of applause. Thank and thank you for uh, letting me share this weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. So stay up because you're going to help me with close things out here okay. in a few minutes. Uh, yeah, you can hang out for a second. I just wanted to say that um, unfortunately Islam, Muslims, uh, on f like, if you give crazy people a religion, they're going to do crazy shit, you know? And all religions have had crazy people do a lot of crazy shit over the years, right? And right now, in the spotlight, the Muslims are, some, some crazy people happen to be Muslims and are doing really crazy stuff out in the world. And I am so, so happy, so grateful that uh, Mamun came in my life for so many different reasons, you know, to be on my team, to be friends, um, to write copy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and especially one of the great things is just to have somebody who can give us the water without all the tea. And the tea is beautiful too. That's another oh. thing too. It's not like, like in all religions. I mentioned the very first segment of the very first session, the very first day, that I went from being spiritual, not religious, to maybe spiritual, omni-religious. Because I'm open to learning from all religions. I like, maybe there's, you know, certain flavors of tea. They're all delicious, right? Toltec tea is... Toltec tea. I got a lot of Toltec tea uh, a few weeks ago when I was in, in Mexico with Heather Ash and Don Miguel Ruiz. And, uh, yeah, there's just so many great ways to get this, um, this great stuff. And this was wonderful. And I'm so grateful that Mamoon could, like, be somebody to share this with, um, you know, the Western world maybe, or the, the whole world basically, but the non-Muslim world who, um, you know, especially in the media, all we get is, you know, we get to see all the crazy people, the crazy Muslims doing crazy stuff versus the awesome Muslims that have such a great heart. I mean, peace, love, presence, you know, um, consciousness, all that stuff. It's all the stuff that we are all about. And I'm just... You know, so love that and so excited to have watched Mamun blossom and flower in becoming a spiritual leader in this world, which is really what I see as ultimate destiny. Do you guys see that for him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I shudder for the day that he can no longer be on our team for whatever reason because he's now off teaching, you know, stuff like this all over the world or whatever however that may show up for, for that. But I see that for him. I've seen it all along. I see it even, now, even more now. And I'm very grateful to have you in my life Thank and you. on my team and in our audience, in our room. Thank so. you so, so much. One more time for Mamoon. Oh, I was... <laughs> Can I say something about crazy people? Really yeah. quickly. Yeah. And we're all crazy too, by the way. I know. Yeah, um, I'm one of them. So <laughs> Karl Marx said, religion <clears throat> is the opium of the masses. And I think that's complete rubbish. I think ideology is the opium of the masses. Because religion is, you know, Gandhi said that 
religion has no place in po people say religion has no place in politics, and that's because they don't really get what religion is. But he was looking at the universal principles that you know can be very guiding. Um, but the reason I think this idea of religion is the opening of the masses, it's not its ideology, it's because ideology is all based in, I really, really believe my thoughts are real, and I'm so certain of it, I'm going to convince you that my thoughts are real, and if you don't even agree with it, then I'm going to get really angry and all this kind of stuff. That's ideology, that's not really religion. And it's all the judgment, basically. You all should judgment. do it the way oh. that I read that you were supposed to do it. Right. Gosh darn you. Yeah. So yeah, just okay. that thought occurred. Yeah, sweet. I just wanted to say thank you to Mamoon because you took something that a lot of us are afraid of and turned it into something beautiful. And, and that was a blessing. Thank you. Yeah. The community that's been established, the desire that everyone here wants to establish a community, the, the, ju the lack of judgment. You know, Mamoon, I appreciate what you said, and I'll never forget. I've written it down and circled it. When, it, when you said, when, ju when judgment enter enters, wisdom leaves. And I think we're all about wanting to learn wisdom. Mm -hmm.